Okay, going to record a video going over the post here that uh, AZ Jackson just posted. So they're basically giving us a preview, giving some insights, and looking for feedback. It's the title of a thread. Uh, looks like this is mostly about the Nexus Anomaly stuff. So they like the core changes. That's good. Um, the more controversial change was to Towers, Forts, and Keeps. I haven't read all this. I just skimmed like the first paragraph or two, and then I was like, you know, I should probably just make this video because I'm probably going to have thoughts. Um, so yeah. Uh, they give maps a unique flavor and add cool moments. I I agree with this, and I actually expected that I would dislike the core changes when I first read them in the patch notes, but having played with them, I think they're overall pretty good. I think they could be tweaked and rebalanced in a couple of them, like the Infernal Shrines and Battlefield feel especially strong. Um, Dragonshire feels pretty strong. But a couple of the other ones feel fairly weak in comparison, like especially Cursed Hollow and... Garden of Terror, I think. Garden of Terror is pretty strong if you actually get hit by it, but that shouldn't really happen. Um, and some other ones like like Tomb and Volskaya are okay. Um, Hanamura and there's one other one, I think, that are kind of weird, but Braxis maybe. Um, that they, they just feel like they're kind of there, and they don't really do a whole lot unless you're taking a whole bunch of damage for it. Okay, so as far as towers go, they wanted towers to feel smart. Um, they heard feedback that players were frustrated, and it felt intuitive that you would get attacked and your tower wouldn't defend you when it's supposed to be a defensive advantage thing to be under your towers, which is true. Um, so that makes sense. And then they wanted to create more back and forth gameplay and tower defense situations. Here's where I think the current implementation or current anomaly kind of fails to meet this goal, because Basically, I think if you want back and forth gameplay, you have to allow aggressive dives to happen some percentage of the time and to be like a viable actual option um, so that like one side is scared, one side is playing aggressive, and one side's playing defensive. It's, you know, one side's taking a risk and has a high reward, and the other side, you know, should have some sort of defender advantage or whatever to punish if the high risk play, like, isn't executed properly, right? So, whereas right now, I think this kind of doesn't really happen because instead of having that back and forth and that interplay between both sides, it's generally just the offensive dive doesn't really happen anymore, like, nearly as often, and rather it's just passive on both sides. Like, the offensive player gets into tower range and then they just have to back off after, like, one or two seconds in the tower range. Um, you know, if the person's 10% health or lower, you can maybe finish them off, but Realistically, like having such a short duration that you can be in towers means that that back and forth doesn't really happen, right? It's either you go in and you got the kill and you can get out, or you got the kill and you can't get out, or you don't go in at all in the first place. But it's pretty much like that interaction is over within one or two seconds. There's not really like any back and forth there. It's just kind of like, are you low and gonna die, or is the other guy low and he's gonna die if he overstayed and doesn't have an escape to get out or something? Like, I don't know. So I feel like this is kind of currently something that the current implementation kind of fails at achieving. Um, and I, I really dislike that it takes away from aggressive offensive plays. I think towers being more defensive is fine. And yeah, I would just like to see more skill-based interaction towards it and still allow aggressive plays sometimes if they're executed properly. But right now it just feels like aggressive plays are basically nearly impossible to actually do. Um, even when you've gotten used to it. So, this is the counterplay was to kill enemy minions, blah blah blah. Cool. Um, and it's important that things feel right, and it can be deterrent. Let's see. They spend a lot of time to like make things visual. I think the visual design of the laser uh, targeting was excellent, by the way. I like fully on board that change. That change was great. Um, and definitely a good quality of life improvement there. Okay. So... They had recently made the decision to pull out all the aggro changes. I assume this is in like an internal test build. Um, this isn't in the actual game, so this text is kind of confusing. Um, because they didn't pull out all of the changes in the game. There's, there's still some of them. They pulled out some, so like summons or damage over time ticks or whatever don't do it as much anymore. Um, and it does it when only you and or the thing you're hitting or whatever is in the range of the tower. But it sounds like internally they've just pulled out all of those. So 
it wasn't clear enough when and design concerns and they've been sort of controversial and they're only committed to keeping anomalies and since you're torn on the issue you removed it okay i was kind of worried that this was going to be a thing where the anomalies happened and then they got a little bit of like changes three weeks after they first got implemented to quell the main um pain points let's say with the anomalies and then after that they would receive no changes and then they would become a permanent fixture of the game so uh this is good i'm i'm glad to see this that they are open to changing their mind and to removing stuff and reverting changes um i'm very much on board with that because that is something that i think not only just me but the general community was sort of uh concerned as that seemed like that was more the direction they were going so i'm glad this post got made to uh you know give some insight and clarity on that not being the case <laughs> and explaining stuff so yeah that's good um i'm not necessarily I'll read more, obviously, but I'm not sure that they need to entirely remove it because, again, I kind of agree with the initial reasonings behind it, and it's I do think it is a place that the game could be improved. But I just am not sure that that implementation was the right way to go about it, or the tweaking on it, the the to the tuning on it wasn't uh wasn't whatever correctly adjusted, you know. Okay, so they removed it, and then interesting stuff happened started getting feedback that this is the wrong decision they made the game better felt better with the system on okay so they're they're both rethinking their changes and removing it and they're rethinking their changes in removing it so okay you're still torn you want to make a call soon what you like about the current system what you don't like some pro proposed changes and if you decide to keep it okay Believe Towers feeling smarter as a defending player, they feel like they're doing what they should be. Yes, I agree with this. I like this. I agree with it. Cool. Point number two. We believe we created cool, high tension moments when enemy heroes dive under a tower. We look for Tarkas some ability to manipulate how it gets aggro to make intelligent coordinated plays. I don't necessarily agree with this. I half agree with this. I don't think there's many cool high tension moments. It's sort of it's high tension in that, like I said, the interaction is very um, quick in its decisiveness, one way or the other, where somebody's going to die probably within like two seconds of being under towers, most of the time. Um, this, I, this second sentence, we like how attackers have some ability to manipulate who gets the tower aggro to make the coordinated place. It's pretty much just whoever hits it first, and then once you back out, once that initial person backs out of tower range, like they've tanked like two or three chops, so whatever, you're going to try and like juggle it between multiple people. Uh, then you don't know who it's going to go on next, because you're all, it's like, th you know, there's like five people diving, or four people diving. The tank's like tanking it first, and then he backs out, and then there's three other people remaining. It's pretty much random who that, that of those three people, who it's going to target next. Because you're all going to be hitting a dude, and there's not really a way to control that. I'm not, so I don't really agree with this. Currently, it feels like the attacking aggressive players trying to do a tower dive or something don't have very good control over how to juggle tower aggro. It's like the first target does, you can control the who the tower is going to hit first, but past that, it does not feel controllable. It feels quite random, and it's very annoying because sometimes it'll be like, well, if it had targeted my ally who hit the same guy 0.1 seconds earlier, but it hadn't retargeted yet, then this dive would have worked, but instead it didn't, and instead it targeted me, and I was the one that could mainly do the damage to finish that guy off and get, have an escape, and then I I got targeted, so I die instead, and then maybe they that also baits my second teammate into diving in further to try and secure the kill, and they also die, so it ends up being like one guy dies on their team, two guys die on our team, and it feels really bad that we even tried to do an offensive, aggressive play in the first place, even though we're trying to be coordinated about it, and we're trying to be smart, but just the game didn't really like allow us to do that it doesn't even have any sort of agency in allowing us to manipulate that so instead we actually come out at a loss and we just shouldn't have been aggressive in the first place right so yeah this can be better with improvements in the future i'm not sure what how i would make a suggestion to improve that aspect so i would say something could be like how would you control as the aggressive team when the tower's retargeting who gets retargeted that's tough. And I'm not sure what would be the best way to go about doing that.
that's very tricky. I'm not sure I have a good suggestion on that. Normally, I don't like giving feedback without having a suggestion <laughs> or of like uh, just throwing an idea out there. Like I feel bad making suggest or make giving like negative feedback, especially and just giving criticism or whatever and not having like offering a solution or a potential idea like at least give something like help them out get make them get halfway there you know help them out on the way so i don't know I, that's a very tough problem uh i am sympathetic to the devs there i'll see what they say as possible improvements okay third point manipulate tower damage and stacking armor debuff you can manipulate the interactions tuning knobs how much defensive tower how much nearby or from nearby enemy heroes who are there to defend it. This is kind of confusing wording. How much defensive power is in the tower itself, or from nearby enemy heroes who are there to defend it? Okay, so um, I had to read that a second time just to sort of clarify the wording there. So basically it's saying either we can make the tower really strong and you don't need many enemy heroes, or we can make the tower weaker and then you need like two or three people around you to have a solid defense. Right now, I think you can realistically defend most lanes as one or two people and be pretty safe. And that's... that feels lopsided. It feels like if you have a lopsided uh, person advantage in terms of number of people, like four on two, it feels like that team should be able to not only play aggressive and, and just push, like siege-wise, but also play aggressive and like dive a tower and get a kill or two if they, if they overstep and like the wall is already down or something, right? Um, and currently, it feels like the two people plus a fort have like a very, like they're almost advantaged in the 2v4, which feels very strange. So I think tower should be worth maybe one person or like 1.5 people. And right now it feels closer to like two or two and a half or three almost. So I'm not really a fan of that. Um, I think you could increase the tuning knobs by... Instead of just having the towers become more offensive by having them become more defensive at the same time. So give them an AoE shielding thing, sort of like Chen's drinking thing. I forget what talent uh, it is or what tier it is, but he has like, while you're standing near him, you get some of like the shield he gets or whatever. Um, so like that could be good. Some sort of stacking armor, sort of like avoidance that Cassia has. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be a huge amount, just like up to 20 would be pretty solid. 20, 25 maybe maximum. If you like... Like, you get 5 per second, and if you're standing under the tower for 5 seconds. So it's not like... Like, right now, it feels like if I am in the lane and I back up into my tower range, I am immediately, vastly, like, that that dynamic of, of the balance of scales in terms of that matchup has immediately shifted very significantly. Whereas if I was into towers and I only had 5 armor initially, and then if I stayed in those towers and I got up to 25 armor, then that's like I'm playing a defensive thing, I'm... There's some cost associated with it. I'm not able to like step out as far. I have to stay back to get that full benefit. Um, it, it could probably have a little bit of a grace period if you step out and then come back in, that it doesn't maybe drop all at once. It drops a little bit. Well, you would have to make it kind of drop pretty quickly, because otherwise you get into like weird situations. But yeah, so that would be like one suggestion I have there. But um, So yeah, I think you could lower the damage a little bit still, especially the armor debuff. The armor debuff is still really huge. I think the armor debuff should only go to, like, negative 25. I think a negative 40 is way too much. Um, because it, it's also unintuitive, because I think negative armor normally has a cap of negative 25 in the rest of the game. And there's only, like, one or two abilities or talents that exceed that, and it's, like, Chromie's... S slowing sands ult is one of them and that goes to like a negative 30 and then there's like one other thing that goes to like negative 30 or negative 35 or something but otherwise than that uh negative 25 is the maximum so i think that would be more intuitive as for matching with the rest of the game as well and then it just gives you extra room to like add the defensive like i was saying okay so they're currently too punishing this is the issues with the current system now to create the cool high tension moments you described yes i agree with that they currently hit too hard and make those moments happen as often or as long as we'd like them to. Yes. So the high tension, if you want to have a high tension moment, a high tension moment that lasts one or two seconds isn't very high tension. It's just like a brief spike and then it's kind of over with. But there's not really like much time to like build the suspense or like, um, you know, like have that amped up like high intensity or whatever. It feels very just like it's a brief thing and then it's over with. Uh, it's just like a flash in a pan, you know? Whereas if that lasts like three, four, five seconds, 
that's when you have like a little bit of the suspense. Like you can see as it's playing out, oh, one guy has an advantage. Oh, but he's turning it around or whatever. Oh, it looks like it's going to go this way. Oh, he actually gets an escape before the tower finishes him off and he lives. Like the longer or lengthening the time uh, adds to the tension and it actually makes the moments cooler, I think. Um, so yeah. And like like they said, it also doesn't happen as often because you're so punished, overly punished for trying to play aggressive, and the risk is so high while the reward is very, relatively low that you basically are the 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 risk reward like balance or whatever the math on it and the opportunity cost and stuff is just it pretty much incentivizes you to not play aggressive in the first place. So I don't like that, um, and I agree that that's an issue. They don't feel like they have to change their behavior. Well, they don't like how much they have to change their behavior when near enemy towers, particularly the ones near the gates. Splash damage, yes. Um, I made a video about this. I think it is extremely counterintuitive and pretty much antithetical to MOBA design that not only do a bunch of heroes like not have control over this, their splash and stuff, and a bunch of talents, but even when you do have control over it, the proper the the way to scale splash and like AoE damage in the game is you want to hit as many targets as possible. That includes the seven minions in the wave, and it includes all the structures that you can nearby. Like, the minion wave walks next to the structures. So you can hit more than seven targets with your AoE abilities. You can hit eight or nine or ten or eleven or twelve even uh, with certain ones. So if the proper play is not only not to cast your abilities to hit as many targets as possible, but it's actually because the enemy can intentionally stand in your damage, which is extra dumb and counterintuitive, uh, that it's the the actual proper play a lot of the time is to not cast the ability at all. So you go from how can I optimize using this ability to instead of hit eight targets, I can hit twelve targets, and then I get a fifty percent damage buff for using it in this cool unique way where I waited and uh, used it, you know, positioned it properly to hit the minion wave and the structures at the same time. That's like a cool optimization thing. Instead, you remove all of that optimization skill ceiling and like uh, thought process and things that you can do, and instead. It's a very binary decision of do I cast the ability yes or no, and the answer is most of the time no, so instead I just auto-attack. Like most heroes in the game, I play auto-attack heroes. I'm a ranged assassin main. I play Phoenix. I play Raynor. I play Sylvanas. I play Vala. Those are like my four highest level heroes in the game. Uh, I like right-clicking things, but for a majority of heroes in the game, uh, of, it's vastly more fun to push their buttons than to just right-click things. So you want to have them push the buttons. The buttons are the fun. Push button equals fun. So let them push the button. Don't make pushing button equal not fun, because you die. So that's, yeah, bad. Um, and yes, I don't like that it's near enemy towers. It changes the whole zone of the way maps work. So um, how can I do this? Let's go in here, for example, real quick. Um, let's just go to Infernal Shrine, sure. Uh, so like what it used to be is... The zone of towers was like pretty narrow around where the towers were, like this, um, and that was like their zone of threat. But it, like you could even, it was kind of like it wasn't even red. Let me uh, reset lines. It was kind of like a yellow zone. It, it was like you're in a little bit of danger when you're in range of these towers in here, right? Whereas now, uh, and then you're like in pretty big danger if you got slowed by the by the fort. So the fort range is like maybe like this sort of area. Uh, extends down a little bit further, but you get the idea. Um, and that was like the extra danger zone, because you had the slow and um, and things like that. Whereas this was like a little bit of a caution area, but you could still dive in here. Now it's not only is this area immediately threatening, and this area is like extra double threatening, but it also kind of like extends out even further than it should. Like it extend it, it changes the whole balance of the map because now, like you see um, let's do this in white, sure. This uh, rotation path, if you want to, like, if I'm blue team, I can't rotate aggressively through here, really, because it's too close to the towers. And so, you know, if I'm playing against a Diablo or something that's that's standing over here, um, uh, here's the Diablo. Well, oh, I can't, can't put him, I have to drag him. Okay. Um, if I'm standing near a Diablo over here, he can, like, charge or flip me, and then I'm in towers... And now, because that uh, area, instead of being yellow, now it's red, I am 
in danger there and being under towers and I can just die like straight up just getting flipped into towers or whatever or charged into towers or flip charged into towers or something or you know Garrosh thrown or whatever like all that type of stuff so now it, it just like limits your rotation paths around the map so much more even going through here is kind of risky because that's still pretty close to towers so you kind of just like always have to rotate through these safe paths now you can't even rotate aggressively and like cut people off on the rotations because if my team as blue team can sit in here then uh red team let's color them orange instead of being able to go through here and like go to the objective or something if they're like coming from mid lane fort instead they have to like go around and come around this way and then come in here or like get control of the way first so like it, it has this huge ramification on like the whole rest of the game and the every single map like this just because these zones are now more dangerous not only at the towers themselves but it kind of extends further into the lanes from the towers much more than it did before so it, it just like constricts the map and makes it feel so much more claustrophobic to do every rotation because on both sides the towers just like extend their their like zone of influence so much further into the center of the map um on both sides and this extends uh true to the keeps as well but it's like less of a problem it's especially a problem with the forts um i think and the fort walls i think if the keep walls were still strong that would be fine but maybe remove some of the like armor reduction from the f the fort towers would be a suggestion i have there or something i don't know anyway okay back to actually the the thing sorry i got a little bit sidetracked there but i think that was a good tangent to demonstrate the point i'm trying to make because it's kind of hard to explain in words i think a visual helps um okay so a lot of the map is now more dangerous than before, yes. Less possible to fight enemy heroes, yes. Particularly in early game because of the forts, as I already mentioned, yes. Um, exacerbates the issue in making the lane phase of the game more interesting, yes. It makes the early game extremely, extremely passive, as I mentioned. Just because, like I said, the, the map is so much more constricted on the safe rotation paths for both teams. And so they're so much more incentivized to just always take a safer rotation path and never extend onto the other team's side of the map or anything so like invades are happening less often that's a cool interaction point that's like has nothing to do with towers at all but just because it's on their side of the map and things like that and you can get you know thrown by garrosh into tower range from a camp sometimes uh like those invades are happening less often like so much so much is impacted by this that isn't even relevant to the towers themselves like i said it kind of extends in like this weird influence area further than the actual tower attack range into like a zone even beyond that in yeah it's like a weird just influence thing where it's like they just have this aura where even being anywhere near them is now dangerous even when you're not strictly in the attack range of the towers themselves because there's stuff like knockbacks and things like that that can put you into towers and just being just the possibility of that is too risky because the towers are so strong okay uh, some players just like the way things have been for years. It's n This is not a correct description. The problem is the game has taught you how the game should be played and how the game has worked for years. It's not that we liked the way things were before. It's that the game has taught those things to us. You are undermining years and years and years of experience and teaching that the game has been trying to teach you. Um, and that is very rough and counterintuitive. Like, It's like suddenly if tennis players now it's like and now the only legal way to swing your racket and hit a tennis ball is by having the tennis bat be tied around your ankle and you have to like swing your leg to hit the ball back in tennis like it's undermining everything that tennis players have ever learned in the history of playing tennis and it completely undermines that and they have to relearn from scratch what all those areas on the map are what the influences how you should do rotations and things like that it, it's just like it's a completely different game now almost and it's way too drastic of a change and it undermines way too much uh, previous experience that players had and the teaching that they should have. Like, it should be a fundamental thing that you learn that you can rely on of, like, here's where the tower range is. Here's where I'm safe. Here's where I'm not safe. And now, like I said, all those range of influences um, and zones of control and safety and things like that on the map have expanded out and constricted the map way, way, way more than they ever should have. Um, okay. So they don't like a change to a large fundamental aspect of the game. Again, it's... It's not that I don't want it, it's that you shouldn't do that. Like, that's, I don't know how else to explain that, but like, it's way too drastic of a change. You're you're playing a, almost a different game at this point. Um, I It probably sounds like hyperbole that, and I'm exaggerating a little bit on how extreme of a change it is, but I think just by the nature of what they said above even, that their own, it was such a drastic change that when they removed it, their own 
internal feedback was like, oh, this feels way too different now. Um, and we want it back to the way it was. Like, I think that, that speaks to that. Okay. Uh, it's not a reason to never make changes. I agree with this. You have to just make changes in incremental steps or in a way that, um, how else should I describe this? It's not just incremental steps, but changes that keep the the core like spirit of what the game it has been trying to teach you and the zones of like where the map are safe or whatever um you can still make changes it it just needs to be done very carefully i guess is, that's the best way i can summarize that okay you always keep in mind the bar needs to be high in order to keep these fundamental changes to the game systems the bar needs to be high in order to keep the fundamental changes to game systems i think this means this is kind of a weird sentence so they're saying basically, the ch if you're changing a fundamental system because it's such a drastic and disruptive change to the players, that it, the change needs to be exceptionally good and beneficial for the game in order for it to be kept, I think is what he's trying to say there. Um, some of the wording on this is a little bit unclear. Okay, you've covered where you're at. Here's the potential ideas you've been debating. If you decide to keep the changes, you could end up doing none or all of them, and you're open to other ideas. Uh, change your structures to prioritize map objectives before anything else. Um, I'm, I, I think this isn't strictly needed. I'm, I'm kind of okay either way on this. I think it just should be consistent and clearly, um, clearly stated to players. Like, if, it, cause ironically, some objectives are actually stronger if the turrets are not focusing them. Like, one of the, the benefits of the, uh, Infernal Shrines Punisher was that when you're defending it, you can bait it over the wall, and then you have three towers focusing it, and it's taking damage from three towers, whereas sometimes it'll only take damage from one or two towers on the front gate. So then it's getting killed uh, whatever. 66% as fast as it would if there's three structures hitting it. Uh, I think it's even different because the fort tower does more damage than the actual gate towers or something? I don't know. So, uh, in some cases, having stuff focus the towers is actually could potentially be better or worse. I'm, I'm not strictly... I, I don't have a strong opinion one way or the other on this, really. Um, I do think not wanting to push with map objectives, on one hand, like, split pushing isn't necessarily bad. Um, I think it... Ironically, a problem with split pushing is that it does feel worse for the team that's defending. First of all, it, it's also a very disruptive, counterintuitive, goes against the teaching... A fundamental thing that the game has been teaching you for years that I already mentioned above because it used to be you always push with we with the objective now you push in the lane opposite the objective and you split push right so that's one aspect but for the defenders I think it when there's like a punisher or an immortal pushing and there's five teammates to back it up it feels like you're very centralized and you have a centralized like we defend at the keep we defend at the fort we defend at the wall you know we want to bait the punisher over and then they can't push with that as easily like there's a very centralized focus to what you're trying to do and what the enemy team is trying to do. And it's like, if we defend here, they're under our keep. After we kill the Punisher, we can chase them, we can wipe them, you know, we can counter-engage onto them or whatever, and we can turn our fight around, and that's like a comeback mechanic. I think it removes the comeback mechanic if the other team is split-pushing, and it's like, well, they're guaranteed going to get something out of this siege, which, to be fair, they kind of should because they already won an objective, so that's their reward for winning the objective, is like getting some amount of siege guaranteed, so that's fair. But on the other hand, it feels like you're kind of making a lose-lose choice as the defender of do you defend the lane with the heroes or do you defend the lane with the objective? And no matter which side you choose, you're kind of losing either way, and that feels bad as a defender. So I think, ironically, this, like, in a change that's meant to help the defender feel better, they're making the defender feel worse. So overall, I think prioritizing the map objective is probably better than not, but I'm not, I don't actually feel super strongly one way or the other. Uh, it adds another rule, it can be unintuitive for defending players. You'd be surprised because it was this way for years before, and it was very intuitive for everybody, I think, and there wasn't that many complaints about it, as far as I know. Yeah. They'll not always be defended by their towers, only most of the time. I mean, it's pretty clear that, like, oh, I'm not being defended by my towers. I wonder why. Maybe because there's this gigantic immortal pushing in the lane, and the towers are a little bit preoccupied focusing the giant immortal that's hitting them with this giant sword, or this dragon knight that's, like, breathing fire all over them or something. My towers might be a bit distracted right now. I don't know. <laughs> I think I think players will be able to uh, come, like, 
to terms with that pretty pretty easily based just based on that it was the way, that way before for years and it was fine. Um, the towers feeling smart for how they work. I would argue that a tower is focusing the giant immortal or the dragon knight objective or the uh, Volskaya mech or something feels pretty smart. Like that's the big map objective. It's on a limited timer. The heroes there's five of them. So and they they have less death timers and they're not on a strict timer of when they're going to be on the map and things like that. So I would say that the towers can still feel smart while hitting map objectives, but this is kind of like a semantic subjective argument. So uh, they don't defend their teammates in the moment of game when they need them the most. Um, the moment of... No, I, I disagree with that because the moment when you need them the most is like the reward... Ha there has to be a reward for winning the objective. Uh, and the like, if the other team wins the objective, you have to have some sort of punish moment after that, that's just like the way the game works. I don't know. Um, yeah. Okay. So change tower so the front towers prioritize minions, but the fort keeps and core prioritize heroes who attack other heroes. Um, yes, this would be my suggestion. I don't think the keeps and core. I think you can keep it for the keeps and core and the forts. I think it's just the fort towers that I would change primarily. And that's mostly to change the, the map zones of influence that I showed um, to be a bit more what they used to be. Early game would better record aggression and pushing, yes. Uh, less of the map would be dangerous currently is, yes. Uh, they can attack gates without feeling like the splash damage could get them into trouble, yes. I would also, actually no, I would do it on the keep gates as well, actually. Yeah, I, w I would make this the front, yeah, the gate towers, yeah. I would change this for keeps and forts now that I think about it. Because this is a pretty big factor, and this would still be true on the keep as well. If anything, it's more true on the keep than on the fort. Okay. Cons, it adds complexity to the game with two different aggro rules depending on the structure. Um, there's already different rules depending on the structure because they do different amounts of damage. They have different effects on the game. Killing a keep gives persistent catapults. Killing a fort gives occasional catapults, periodic catapults. Killing towers doesn't do anything. They look different. They do different amounts of armor reduction, so there's already differences depending on the structure. I don't think this would be too uh, different. If anything, I think having them look different, like the forts and keeps look very big and intimidating, while the towers just feel like kind of a small thing, I think that's that visual that visual distinction is enough to separate that complexity and like make it very um, compartmentalized, like in players' understanding, and it's fairly intuitive to understand why they might be different. Okay, lower the damage to structures to the heroes. They won't be as directly threatening themselves, which mitigates the issue in being punishing the early game. I would do this regardless of these other changes. I would do this no matter what. If if you're keeping the changes, I would do this no matter what. From what they currently are. What they were before was fine. You don't need to nerf them from that. But make them go back to closer to what they were before, and I think that's primarily the armor reduction and I, like I said, I would cap it at negative 25 armor, I think, and that's pretty reasonable as a, a change. Because um, I'm not, in fact, I do think they can be buffed from what they were in the past, and that's what the negative 25 armor would do. Um, okay. To punish them in the early game. More time to be aggressive and less immediately punished and towers initially start to shoot them. Yes, I like that. Um, I would also, I don't think I would keep forts and keeps at negative 10 per shot. I would keep it at negative 5 for everything. And that would reduce the number of aggro rules depending on the structure. Um, and then you have 5 seconds before you're at the negative 25 armor. Right now, it's 4 seconds to be at negative 40. And because there's 2 towers, even though they both do 5, realistically most of the time you're going to get hit by both of them. So it's still basically 4 seconds to get to negative 40. And so not only are you hitting the cap in 4 seconds instead of 5, but the cap is negative 40 instead of negative 25. Which, I don't know the math on it, but it's that's like another probably 30% damage increase that you're taking or something, it's it's going to be pretty huge. So just changing that, I think, would be give one more second of, of leeway before you hit the cap and make the cap a lower um, a lower debuff value. I don't know what the term for that is, but okay. Puts the onus of properly defending towns more on the defending team, which incentivizes interactions between heroes. Yes! Do this! Make If you're going to dive people, make the heroes actually have to do stuff to kill me. I think um, just as a as an axiom of like how the game should work, the majority of times that I die in the game, 
the majority of damage I take should be damage that an enemy hero dealt to me. I should not die and have 59% of the damage be a tower. Like, the heroes should have to kill me. That's how the game should work. Um, if I'm, like, diving at a tower, a tower 1v5 or something, and or I'm just diving a tower and there's no other defending hero nearby, and I sit there for 10 seconds, yeah, have the tower kill me, obviously. But, like, in the majority of real game reasonable situations, the vast majority of damage I should take, sh and the majority should be dealt by heroes. It shouldn't be towers dealing the damage. The towers can be helping the the heroes deal more damage, like with the negative armor or something, but they shouldn't be doing the ma the vast majority of the damage themselves. Okay. Make the towers weaker. Tower diving too prevalent. Uh, I don't think tower diving was too prevalent before. I think the problem was there wasn't a clear um, defending, like... Hmm, well, I don't know. I don't think tower diving was too prevalent before. I'll just say that. And I think a lot of the targeting changes already help this. And I think you can buff towers from what they were to already make tower diving less prevalent than it was in the past. And I think this change currently, the anomaly, went too far. Okay, so those are the thoughts. Take the time to read through. Looking for feedback on how we feel, whether we'd like to go back to the old system, or how to improve the current one. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so I'm going to write this in a comment, and I'll probably link this video at the bottom. Overall, I do think I like this system, and I would overall probably keep it, but I would just tune it down a lot. Um, particularly the the gate towers. Uh, I think forts and keeps being stronger is good, and that's maybe a good half-step compromise to go. Um, but I don't like how it constricts the map. I think aggressive tower dives should be uh, lengthened. I think you're changing a lot of fundamental experience and fundamental like teaching that the game has taught you that you don't want to undermine that um there's a whole lot of stuff that i already mentioned it's hard for me to summarize it all but that's my overall thoughts as far as the anomaly goes